Now we're going to install the threaded rod. Um, this is a six inch length uh, threaded rod and uh, basically we're just going to put it in uh, a kind of temporary length right now because uh, we're going to have to adjust it later. So just thread it into your rib nut. Um, and then put a flat washer on it, and a lock washer, followed by a nut. Thread that nut all the way down, because uh, basically what that this nut will do is it locks this threaded rod into place. Okay, I'll snug it up right now, but we're going to be adjusting its length a little later. There. So that's basically what that'll look like. Next step is uh, we're going to take a uh, threaded rod and uh, we're going to put one of these uh, nylock nuts. So basically it's uh, the nut that's got the nylon in it to keep it from backing off. And in order to thread that on, I'm going to use a little piece of cardboard to protect the threads and grab it with a pair of pliers or vice grips and then just thread this on. For now we're going to thread it just basically so that the bolt goes to the end of the nut. Like that. Okay. So my assistant Bill is going to go underneath the truck basically uh, to get access to the other side of the holes and he's going to uh, basically put these uh, threaded rods through those holes and then I'm going to thread the nut uh, and washers on from the inside of the truck bed. Here you go Bill. So I put a flat washer Lock nut. And a nut. Or a, I'm sorry, a lock washer. And a nut. Again, we're not, not overly tightening these right now because uh, there is an adjustment step later. On this one you'll see it's tilted up a little bit because we we're on just a little bit of a slant on the body here. So uh, what I'm going to do is just kind of grab this from the base. Um, you can use just about anything, but grab it from the base and just bend it down slightly. So it's going to pucker the sheet metal just a little bit locally. But you can see how easy that is now. It's nice and straight out. So again, if, if for some reason you can't within the slot find a flat spot for the, the nut, you're going to have to just distort the sheet metal just a little bit in order to get the nut so that it's parallel with ground. Okay, so now we'll put the other one on. Just a little bit. Okay, so we're going to stop on this side now and we're going to go ahead and basically do the same exact steps to the other side. Then we'll get to the uh, adjustment step. So uh, basically we're repeating the same steps on the passenger side of the truck. I'm positioning the uh, side pod with the marks that we had made previously. In this case I'm using a little uh, spacer here that's about the same height as the uh, corrugations in the bed just to kind of put the um, side pod in the right space so I don't have to hold it uh, so much. Um, I line up my marks and then again I just want to create a couple of places 
uh, where we'll put put the um, the whole uh, locations within the slot. And I'm looking for a place ultimately that uh, we can do that is off of the um, uh, kind of geometric uh, changes of the sheet metal. We're looking for a flat spot. So on my marks, I'm just going to find a space within the line, so it would be within the slot that would be on a non angled surface, if at all possible. And I'm going to put my center punch there. Okay, so first I'm just going to drill a pilot hole uh, for each hole. I'm using a 1764 cents bit. We'll start with the top one. Pilot holes drilled. I'm going to redrill the top hole. Remember again, most people don't have a 1732nds drill bit. So um, we are going to use a half inch. It'll come in most uh, drill bit kits. And then we're just going to slightly ream out the hole so that we can fit the uh, riv nut. Again, you don't want to go too far, so check the fit uh, often. So you see the first time when you just drill it out is half inch, it's not going to be big enough. So we're going to just ream it out a little bit. Go slow so you don't oversize the hole. Of course, if you do have a 17 uh, 30 seconds inch bit, that, that would be great. You can use that. There we go. So that's a nice fit. Now, again, we're going to get our um, riv nut tool that's included with your uh, assembly. I use a, uh, a bolt, 3 8 inch bolt and a washer. And the idea is to just keep the riv nut from spinning by using the riv nut tool while uh, you crank down on the bolt to collapse the riv nut uh, so that it mushrooms over on the other side and tightens up against the sheet metal. Okay, so you're really cranking down on this and don't curse me, this is hard. <laughs> Um, but basically we uh, supplied a tool, so a cheap tool, so you don't have to go buy an expensive oh, okay. riv nut Where's installation that? tool. It does work, but it does take uh, some effort uh, just to collapse that riv nut down. Just keep going until it really, really tightens up and you'll know if you're in. Let's reverse that off and see if it's nice and snug. All right. Yeah, that looks nice. Just a quick tip, you may want to use a new washer each time you do this because it does kind of gouge in and that's kind of exasperating. In fact, that feels like that basically welded together. Okay, so you might want to replace the washer each time, each time you do this, because when that gouges in, it uh, makes it more difficult to turn. Alright, so again, I'm just going to drill out the pilot holes that we made in the bottom. 
Again, it's not the same size hole as you put in the top. These are 25 64 inch holes, so basically just one size above a 3 8 uh, because we're going to be extending 3 8 inch uh, threaded rod through these. Now we just thread our uh, 3 8 threaded rod and we're just basically going to extend it so that we think uh, the, uh, the end of the uh, stud is just through the, the riv nut because we're going to have an adjustment step later. Put a flat washer on and then a lock washer and a nut and we'll just kind of snug that down a little bit for now. That's, that's what it should look like. Now this next step is kind of a two-man step because you need someone to extend the uh, threaded rod through. You can access the other side of these holes from underneath the truck real easily. Uh, so we'll want a, um, a flat washer on the end of each one of these. And then Bill's going to kindly climb under the truck. And... Okay, so my threaded rod is going to magically appear. Look at that. And we'll put a washer and then a lock washer and then up. We'll just thread these nuts down just slightly snug, keep them in place for when we uh, do our adjustment step. Okay, now the next one will magically appear. You can see this hole is uh, on uh, some of the shelves at a slight angle, um, which is not preferable, but it's something that we can deal with. So put a flat washer on that, lock washer. This one I'm going to snug up a little bit more um, so that we can actually use the bolt as a little bit of leverage to very locally um, just kind of pucker the sheet metal uh, so that we can get that bolt to lay down uh, so that it's parallel to ground. Okay, so I've uh, snugged that up and as you can see, uh, the bolt's um, kind of pointing upward. Uh, just grab something, maybe a pair of pliers. I'm just going to use this uh, wrench itself and uh, get down uh, towards the base and then just kind of bend it slowly. I don't know if you can see that, but you're just slightly puckering the sheet metal locally around the bolt and do that until the bolt is parallel to ground. There you go. So again, uh, it looks fine. Uh, you shouldn't have a problem with that. You just want to get the bolt so it's just about parallel to ground. Doesn't have to be perfect because um, there's a lot of adjustment ability in the system.